Alrighty, tubers, we're gonna be working on the zombie apocalypse vehicle here. I mean, the 95 Jeep Cherokee. We're gonna be putting a blanket over the injection system, over the fuel rail, over the injectors, because we've got the issue where we have vapor lock. Some people say that that's impossible with fuel injection. It is not impossible. I've had it happen to me on this on several occasions and every single time I shut it off after driving it the it engines up to full temperature the heat of the exhaust underneath the intake heats this up and vaporizes vaporizes all the fuel and pushes all the fuel back into the tank or wherever it's going I know I don't have a check ball issue or check valve issue I know that works but somehow when it vaporizes the fuel in here, it's going somewhere. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this fuel rail off today. I'm going to get that blanket put on. But then I also went ahead and bought four hole injectors. We're gonna take the original single hole or single port injectors off. We're gonna put the four port injectors on. And uh, yeah a video of that I'll let you know how long it takes me from beginning to end uh, a little windy today so I do apologize yeah let's get it uh, let's get to it all right youtubers so we're gonna go ahead and start here I do have an appointment in about an hour let's see if we can get this finished before Sweet. Fuel rail is off. Dismiss my alarm that was going off on my phone. Hopefully it wasn't buzzing or anything. Injectors look relatively clean. Again, they are just the single port injectors. Definitely some garbage on this one, but that, that has really nothing to do with the performance of the injector. That's the part that you want clean up front there. And they are all pretty clean. I usually run pretty good fuel on this Jeep. I try, not, I try to shy away from anything garbage or cheap. So, there are O-rings here. You want to keep track of all your O-rings. You're not going to reuse them. But you want to make sure that you're not trying to force an O-ring on top of an O-ring. I don't even know if you can see my hand gestures. An O-ring on top of an O-ring. You don't want to double stack them like that because it's not going to go together and you're going to be cussing and breaking and very, very upset. Let's go ahead and I'm going to go run inside and swap these guys out. All right, let's get back to this here. Yeah, my appointment is in about 15 minutes. I've got to be, I'll be finishing up with this before my appointment. But, we'll definitely be coming back and finishing it after. He's got these clips here. Much easier to remove them with a pair of pliers. Yeah, much easier. Yeah, hopefully you can see there. Heard that these injector clips do not fit over the new injectors. We'll test that. We'll look at that. Start with this end. A lot of people have cussed and sworn at these things too to get them out. I'm going to go grab some uh, 
Lubri uh, some lubricant. Alrighty, back again. Turn on the air conditioning, so hopefully it will cool down a little bit in here. I'm gonna spray just a little bit of lubricant. Use your favorite lubricant, whatever it may be. WD-40, PB Blaster. I'm gonna put a little bit in each one of these. There's an, uh, there is a rubber O-ring in these. I'd imagine a little bit of lubricant will go a long ways to get these things out. There's one. And the O-ring's down inside there still. What I'm doing is pulling and rocking in circles, as you could see. Um, another thing you don't want to do is you really want to be careful not to bend this fuel rail. You want it straight. If you bend it, go get another one. Go down to a junkyard or something. Oh, these are definitely hard to get out. There's another one. That one came out with there with the O-ring. If I can get a little bit of lubricant worked into them here. There's another one. And another. Pulling and twisting. Ah, seems to be working really good. Pulling and twisting. All of the uh, O-rings have come out with each and every single one of those. So there we go. All the injectors are out. I'm gonna go ahead and take this fuel rail and I'm gonna clean it up. I'm gonna scrub it up a little bit, spray it, the inside of the fuel rail out with some injector cleaner because you can get garbage, varnish, and stuff inside the fuel rail building up. And after I'm done with that, I will be back. Alrighty, we're back again. Done with my appointment. It was a haircutting appointment. And we're going to go ahead and start reinstalling everything here. Uh, I apologize for the noise of my dog walking in and out of the room. <laughs> You're going to hear a lot of dingy 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 ding in and out. It's always checking on people that's here. So, out with the old injectors. Keep them around. I'll probably just throw them in this package. These guys come in. You know, the new injectors. Just because I have something crinkly doesn't mean I have a treat there, dude. He just crinkles and he thinks treats. So here's. If you, yeah, you can see it on the camera. Here's that uh, heat blanket. It was saying online that this was for a different Jeep but it was the same engine and everything, so I went ahead and bought it. If I need to trim it up or change it a little bit, then I'll do that. But I couldn't find an actual like blanket for this thing, so let's see. It sits this way. Just trying to run it through my head here. Yeah, I'm gonna have to have to trim it a little bit. I couldn't, like I said, I couldn't find one specifically for this Jeep, but I'm going to have to open up some different holes for different things. This is, that should line up. Oh, let's see. Okay. That guy will line up. Oh, no, it'll fit. It'll fit without any trimming. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out how this fits on here. This guy goes, let's see, go over this guy first. This is insulation of the four port injectors and the heat blanket. Going to have to pull this tab part off. 
off of here for easier installation, it looks like. Hopefully, yeah, you can see there. Just using a pick. Just pick, small screwdriver, whatever you can get in behind there carefully. Trying to move it up out of the way without breaking this tab because I really don't want to go buy another one. Sure, they're cheap, but I just don't want to go to the store and have to go buy another one. So, be real careful with it here. There we go. Get it placed over there. Placed over that guy. Themselves. This is a fiberglass blanket on the back side. So you're going to want to make sure no fiberglass gets into your injector holes. Make sure you get these guys in first. There's little slits that have been cut from the factory. Yeah, this is going on my 95 Jeep Cherokee. And they didn't even have Cherokee listed on the website that I bought this. They had TJ, uh, XJ, a couple different ones. Not, not XJ, obviously not XJ. That's Cherokee. But you know what I mean. It wasn't listed. Put this guy back down like that. Blanket's going on nice and tight. Uh oh. your bleeder also where you test your fuel pressure prettiest around that but I'm not going for pretty I'm going for functional here try to keep as much heat away from this as possible come on is installed. Done. All right, now let's get on to everything else. These guys will go with the plugs towards this. Let me double inspect real quick. Just making sure there's no fiberglass in that area. They say to put these in with <coughs> some Vaseline. Goodness gracious, I need a drink. <coughs> um, they say to put these in with vas Vaseline. So I ended up going to the store and just buying the smallest little thing of Vaseline for like $2. And we are going to smear just a little bit around the edge here. I'm going to do this for all of them. Keep it more on the top side. Like that. They say Vaseline or dielectric grease. I think I'd rather use Vaseline. I feel like fuel would dissolve it better than dielectric. Wipe that off here. And then you can see it on camera. I'm actually going to take a little more Vaseline. Make sure it's well lubricated. So I'm not 
fighting this here. There we go. You want to be real gentle with it. Making sure not to roll the... You don't want to roll the gasket or the o-ring. You can actually roll o-rings and when they get rolled they don't seal. So first one's on. We're going to go ahead get the rest of them done here and we'll be back. Alrighty, so last two here. I actually prefer this method more. Putting a little bit of Vaseline and wiping them inside. It's less of a mess and these things are slipping in so easily. Come on. Of course that last one's going to be the hard one on camera. Making sure not to pinch. In fact, let me, that was the last one that didn't get very much Vaseline. I'm going to put a little on this one. Of course, I contradict what I said, what I just said. Whatever. You want to make sure not to roll. Be nice and gentle, nice and easy. Here we go. Alright, now let's see if those, see if it's true that these clips, I mean, I, I think they'll fit. I see where they used to sit. There's actually a part that's cut out to hold them. There isn't a part cut out on these Ford injectors, but I will put them in anyways, if I'm able. Yeah, I really don't see the use of putting them on, really. Because they're spread out and they're not doing anything. So, I've heard a lot of guys, um, a lot, or all guys don't even, guys, girls, don't even run those, those pins or those clips. Because your fuel rail is bolted down at, I, at anyways. So, it really doesn't matter too much. We've got injector blankets as well. These guys will just wrap around like so. But we will be installing those on the Jeep. One thing to note here that I noticed interesting. On the original injectors you've got a shelf for that o-ring to set on or in. Let's see if I can find one that doesn't have the O-ring on it, right there. We've got that shelf for that to sit on. These Ford injectors originally had, it looks like, originally had an O-ring right here. But since that won't fit on the Jeeps, they actually put the O-ring up here. And it, as long as it seals, it's interesting. Alrighty, tubers. Be putting this guy in. Figure out where he sits. Already cleaned out the holes. Looks like that one could be used a little more cleaning. Just using this instant parts cleaner and degreaser. Fast blast trigger. It's really hard to get in. making sure there's really next to nothing in these holes. Using the straw to scrape out some stuff too. It's a good time to be wearing safety glasses because stuff will be flying in your eyes. This pointy part goes towards the front of the Jeep, the square part goes towards the back.
little fancy. that in there. Check those holes again, make sure there's nothing in them. Get some of this wiring up and out of the way. And then we're going to go ahead and start putting some Vaseline down in here. about the injectors, what if any fuel increase, fuel economy increase I get, and I will not be doing that in a separate video. The beginning of this video, what you're seeing now, and the very end of the video will all be filmed, like the first part will be filmed now. The last part, the review of them, will be filmed in about a month's time. And I get the, the engine time to adjust to the injectors, to relearn the injectors, videos online of guys saying, oh, well, I'll let you know what uh, what the injectors are like um, later on, and then you never see that second video, ever, and you never see that second video, so I'll make sure to get one out for you guys, or not get one out, it'll be a part of this video, so nobody has to even go look for it. It's pushing and wiggling. back in it and then I'll get the wires put back on I am timing myself to let you guys know how long it actually takes instead of uh, TV movie magic and uh, then we'll do a first startup we'll do I'll show you the ECU reset that I got to do on this and then uh, start up for the first time all right so we're gonna be doing the ECM reset you unhook your negative terminal and your positive terminal. I didn't unhook the actual terminal on this one, I just unhooked the cables that connect to it because it's a heck of a lot easier for me. We're going to connect. Well, you wait about 30 seconds to a minute and then you connect your positive to your negative. Obviously not your actual terminal from the battery positive negative together. That would that would be bad you connect from the vehicle the negative terminal and positive terminals to each other and make sure to pull out any and all power that could possibly be stored in the vehicle if you have a subwoofer with a capacitor 
you're going to want to wait longer than 30 seconds because this will cr create a sizable spark. We're going to go ahead and move that negative off to the side, connect this positive first. I need to get one of those uh, kits for this Jeep that helps with uh, cables. All my cables have either been spliced on or they're factory two small ones or what have you. I want to put the, pos or the negative on. And you want to do one quick connect. You don't want to connect, 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 connect and have it make sparks and stuff. That's bad. Can be bad for the electrical part, electrical system. Being careful not to spark from negative to positive here. tripod here what you're going to want to do after that is jump in your vehicle take your key for the vehicle let's see yes I have 285 on this original engine key to the on position you turn your Headlights on, headlights off, key off, and the ECU has been reset. So what we're gonna be doing now, cycling the key several times to pump fuel back into that fuel rail. Or you can bypass the relay and run just a jumper on the fuel relay. We're gonna go for the first start here. A little bit of a misfire there, but it is learning. stumble. That stumble was there before though. That stumble definitely is not as bad. It does sound different. There's a little bit of a different sound to it. All the injector cables are plugged in. Check them all. Yeah, definitely a little, a little stumble there. Not stumble. Um, that throttle response definitely does seem a little quicker. I also got to remember we were using that parts cleaner and that was going into the intake well we'll give it about a month let's see how she runs see how it uh, feels after running for a month and learning like I said that little bit of a hiccup is still there but that was there I think that's always been there well we'll give it some time in about a month, tubers. Alrighty, tubers. As you can see, we've put quite a few more miles on this since the last video. It's been nearly a year since that video, in the beginning of this video, obviously. Um, as you can hear, I'm a little sick today. <laughs> I've been this weekend. But uh, 
we're gonna go ahead and start it up you can see the difference between the first of the video and now on how it starts starts up pretty good usually it doesn't hesitate or anything as you can see we are low on fuel running pretty good let's go open the hood for you as you can see it's running pretty good you can see there's uh, quite a bit more age on everything now Go ahead and shut the engine off here so you can hear me a little bit better. Alrighty, so there's those Ford injectors. They are wrapped in those blankets. Can't really even see them, can you? But they are those Ford injectors we installed. I got wrapped back up. Now, Pros and cons to these. Pros, throttle response seems to be better. My fuel economy did go up just a little bit, not by much, really not by much at all, but it did go up just a smidge, I think by maybe one, one uh, mile per gallon. Now you gotta remember, this engine is worn out. It's got nearly 300,000 miles on it, and yeah, these engines can go much longer than that. This guy though, I know is worn out and ready for retirement. I actually have another engine to go in this. This guy, as you can see, has tons of blow by. Enough blow by to where if I am towing anything with this Jeep or going up a, a heavy hill, it'll actually push the dipstick out and have enough blow by to go all over behind the dipstick because air goes through here so yeah better throttle response I will post up the pictures of the before and after of the emissions on this and it seems the emissions got a little bit better even I'm sure it's because of better combustion better atomization out of the four port instead of the single port and injectors Here's the before, as you can see, it's a little crooked, I actually wasn't planning on taking a picture of this and putting it in the video until later I thought about it and had to go back and screenshot a video, um, but here's the before, here's the after. So yeah. I'm loving the injectors. It seems to start up a lot easier now. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't do the extended crank. It took it probably 20 different cycles of start and shut off, start and shut off, uh, to finally get it to learn the injectors and start using them correctly. One thing that I did have an issue with, which I haven't heard anybody else talk about. Where the injector plugs, the actual plugs themselves, they're worn out on the Jeep. There's two pieces of metal that sit like this, one for this side, one for that side, obviously to trigger the injector, but the metal pieces of metal just sit like this. Well, they're stretched out and they don't want to make very good contact with the new injectors. The actual pins on the Ford injectors are smaller. The ones on the Chrysler injectors, the original injectors that came off of this, were a bit thicker, maybe twice as thick. So one thing you can do is go through, change out all of your injector plugs. All of these are still original. Uh, I have been able to get into the injector plugs and push those metal pieces back together. Some of them still will misfire from time to time. Um, and I just have to get under here and wiggle each plug until I find the one that's causing the issue. And it will throw an engine code pretty quickly. It uh, really does not like one of these misfiring. It, uh, it'll throw a code for injector, injector trigger or something like that. Injector 
not triggered. I can't remember exactly the code that it gives. Oh, uh, let me show you how to check the code for those of you who, for those of you who would like to know. So to trigger a code, when you first turn your Jeep on, there's your check engine. You cycle it, I think, five times. And then it'll actually give you a blink code. Say two, three, four, five. And it should give me another five, two, three, four, five. And then it'll stay off for a minute saying 55 meaning no codes, there's nothing wrong. So that's how you get a code out of these pre-OBD Jeeps, OBD2 Jeeps. So if you do have a code, that's how you check it. Um, if you go online, 1995 Jeep Cherokee uh, Blink codes, you'll be able to find a whole list of what's going on. Um, if I'm able to find that list, I'll link it. I'll, uh, I'll actually put the whole list in the description of all the Blink codes. But yeah, like I said, this this uh, Jeep will end up getting a new engine here pretty soon. Uh, this guy has nearly 300,000 on it. My converter bolts between the engine transmission, the converter bolts in the back seem to be also getting loose or I have a cracked converter because there is some noise coming from back there as well as some almost diesel-like sound coming out of the engine itself. So yeah, I've got a, I think it's a, a newer Wrangler engine. It's the same thing. Um, they had different intakes, different this and that. From what I understand, it's okay to put a newer engine in an older Jeep, but you cannot put an older engine in a newer Jeep. Because the older engines used less sensors, the newer engines used more sensors, then you'd have to make severe changes to it to get it to actually work. So. As long as, I mean, this one's no coil pack, and as long as there's a place to put a distributor cap. Anyways, I'm not going to get into that because I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. So be it. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was educational to you guys. Uh, I tried to cover a couple things that I have not seen out there, being the uh, emissions numbers before and after. So yeah, hope you have a good one. Hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully you learned something. Always trying to help. If you have any questions, put them in the description. If you like the video, uh, if you would mind leaving a thumbs up, it helps with the algorithm. Uh, make sure to have that bell icon clicked so it actually tells you when a new video goes up. If I earned your subscription today, that is awesome. Uh, again, I'm always trying to help, always trying to post lots of videos out there. And if you have any questions or any how-tos you would like to see, whether that be on a vehicle, uh, if I've got the vehicle, I'll definitely do the how-to. If I've got access to a vehicle, um, then I'll try to do a how-to for you guys as well. If it is any questions about small engines, whether that be lawnmower, weed eater, uh, street bike, dirt bike, four-wheeler, blah, blah, blah. If you have any questions, put them in the description. And as always, have a good one, tubers. See ya. Bye.